Welcome to 11.7 B. We're looking at surface area of prisms and cylinders. And I'm not sure if you noticed, but in our textbook, we do not have an 11.7 B, uh, nor a C that we will, we will do next time. So this is information that's not in your Larson textbook, but I'm pulling it from a different uh, textbook and it will be on the FSA. So it's important for us to know how to find the surface area of prisms and cylinders. So let's remind ourselves back here at 11.5 that prisms and cylinders have two bases, two big bases. Big bases, when we say big base, we're referring to the area of the uh, big base uh, here. And so um, the prism and cylinders uh, have two big bases. Remember, those have to be congruent and parallel in order to be bases. So we want to find the surface area of these kind of solids. And in order to do that, <clears throat> let's uh, emphasize or let's uh, get some terminology uh, here. Of course, prism you know that it has two bases like we just said. Lateral faces, so we just said <clears throat> that these uh, are the big bases. Lateral faces are the other faces. <clears throat> and those are the remaining uh, side faces. So for example, this that I've colored in here in the pink, uh, this is a lateral uh, face. Uh, so is this one on the left and this one behind and the way back here and so forth. I just wanted to emphasize one of these at least so you knew that was a lateral face. And on this uh, triangular prism, uh, this uh, on the right hand side is also a lateral face. An altitude, that's a new term for us. Well, no, we've talked about that before uh, to some extent, but not in three dimensional. An altitude of a prism is a segment and it is a perpendicular uh, segment. And I could say here, uh, this guy, let's assume that uh, this is a right angle there. So there is a perpendicular segment or let me put it on the left hand side over here, a perpendicular segment. In other words, the segment is perpendicular uh, to the base and it joins the, uh, it's perpendicular to both of the bases and joins them together. In other words, it's the distance uh, between those two. But altitude is a segment and then height is a length. So the height is the length of that altitude. The lateral area is the area is the sum of the areas of each of the lateral faces the lateral area and we want to find the surface area okay so let's uh, take an example of this uh, rectangular uh, prism I say rectangle because this in the bottom here let's assume it's a rectangle and if I was to unfold this we've talked a little bit about this I've shown you uh, the nets is what they call it. Let's turn this three-dimensional figure into a net, which is a two-dimensional representation of the surface area of this three-dimensional solid. And so if I was to take a razor blade and kind of cut around here and then cut down these edges and then unfold the thing, then it would look like this. So I'm not sure how well you can see this on your from the camera. But here is a three-dimensional uh, prism. And if I was to open this guy up, you see how it is. It, it consists of, here are your two bases. Here's the big base one and big base two. And then these, these are, or this is considered your lateral area. And notice that lateral area will always be a rectangle, always be a rectangle. So it makes it easy to be able to find the surface area of a prism because all, we have, all that we have to do, the surface area of a prism, is merely the lateral area, this pink here, uh, plus two times the area of the big base. Because notice that I have two big bases. 
Now, let's figure out how to determine what the lateral area is. Yes, it's a nice rectangle, <clears throat> and you notice that this distance here is the height of your solid. That's pretty simple. But what's really key is to know that the length here of your lateral area is the same as the perimeter around the big base. And the length of this later, lateral area is the same as the perimeter around that big base. So maybe you can see it this way, that when I fold this thing back up, <clears throat> I, uh, these, the, the length of this lateral area surrounds the big base. In other words, is the distance around the big base, or we call that the perimeter. So the perimeter is the same as the length of this lateral area. So that's why we say that the area, finding the area of the lateral area is P, which is the perimeter, the perimeter around the big base, times the H, which is the height of your, your solid here. And so this uh, equation would go in then for lateral area. And then to find the area of the big base, that is base times height. And when we're using this base, it's the, the length of the big base. So it's not talking, this is a lowercase b. So this uh, lowercase b refers to the length of the base. And the h here is not the height of the solid, it is the height of the big base. So we're looking at this two-dimensional figure here, and we want the height of this uh, rectangle. So we would substitute uh, base times height in for the area of the, the big base. So let me show you how to put this together. I know I'm going through a lot of stuff uh, here rather quickly. Uh, work hard though, please work hard to understand what I am saying. You have the convenience of backing up the video and playing it over again if you need to. But uh, I'm trying to be very careful on how I say things succinctly and quickly. So don't allow it just to flow over your in one ear, not the other ear. So I want to find the surface area. Again, surface area is the surface, the, um, what's the best way to say it? Like if I was to wrap this in wrapping paper, how much paper would I need? That's what we're looking at here. And so this is a prism, <clears throat> and when I unfold that prism, I will get a my two bases. There are my two big bases, which were the top and the bottom there. And then I have a rectangle. And notice that this rectangle, the, the length of this rectangle, is the same as the perimeter around the big base. These, this three would match up here, this four, matches up on top there, and this three matches around on the left-hand side there. So one way to be able to find the uh, surface area is to find the area of each of these individual rectangles. That's what they've done uh, here. So five times four is this first one, five times three, five times four, and five times three. And then here are the areas of the big base, three times four, and three times four. So if you want to do it that way, that's fine. You can kind of lay it out and then divide it up into those four different sections um, and then uh, take the area of each individual one and add them together. I think it's easier to start out with this formula. The surface area equals the later, lateral area plus two times the base. And that's what you have here on your uh, formula sheet is on the right hand side we're talking about surface area so here's prism and to find the surface area of a prism you will always start out with a rectangle that is your lateral area and then you ask yourself okay how many bases how many big bases do i have and i have two and what are the shapes of the big bases in this case they happen to be uh, rectangles or it looks like a square so i put those on there and so now my surface area is equal to the lateral area, that's in the pink there, that rectangle, plus two times the area of the big base. And once you have that, then remember the surface area, I'm sorry, the lateral area, 
is equal to the perimeter. So the length of this lateral area is the same as the perimeter around the big base plus two times the area of the big base. So 14 is my perimeter. If I was to add up 4 plus 3 plus 4 plus 3, I think that's it's 8 plus 6. Yeah, that's 14. And then my height of this uh, rectangle in the light green here is 5. Okay, so that takes care of my, uh, takes care of my lateral area. And then plus 2, because I have two big bases. And the area of each big base is the base, which is 3 times 4, which is the height. And so there's my equation, and my solution in this particular case is uh, 94. So the surface area of this prism is 94. Let's actually do one now on your notes. And hopefully we'll begin to pull this together in your mind. Again, I know it's a lot. Hang in there, listen carefully in what we're doing. So we are finding the surface area of this prism. Okay, prism has two big bases. And so we always start out with a rectangle. Always start out when you're finding surface area, uh, draw a rectangle. And I have two big bases. And what are the shapes of each of these big bases? And in this case, they are rectangles. So I draw a rectangle up on top and a rectangle down below. There's two bases there. So to find the surface area of this, um, this prism, surface area equals lateral area plus two times the area of the base. So again, here is your formula sheet. Surface area equals lateral area plus two times the big base. And lateral area, remember, is the perimeter. That's the perimeter around the big base, which is the same as the length of this rectangle, uh, times the height. And this is the height of your three-dimensional solid. And then plus two times. And the area of the big base is little b times little h, or base times height. So let me have you uh, now plug in the numbers. Your perimeter is going to be the uh, distance around the big base. So here is the big base, the distance around here. You know, of course, that if this is 5, this other one over here is going to be 5. And if this is 6, the other one to the left is going to be uh, 6. So you say 5 plus 6 plus 5 plus 6. Okay, That's your perimeter. That's your perimeter around the base. Your height is going to be the height of the, the solid, which is 8, plus 2 times the base. Now, this is the base of the big base. So the base of the big base is 5 times the height. Now, do not do not put in the height of the solid. I don't want that height. I, I'm finding the area. Remember, we're talking about big base here. Maybe I could put a, a big base here. <laughs> I need a red pen, but um, I want to find the area of this big base, and so it's base times height. So I want 5 times 6. Okay, So do not put 8 there. Make sure you put 6 uh, in. That is the base of the big base. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video, plug in your numbers, and calculate that and get me an answer. Or get yourself an answer. Let's look now at cylinders. Remember we said that we're going to find prisms and cylinders. Now that we have the prisms down, cylinders are, it'll be a piece of cake. You watch. Okay? So, to do this though, I do need my cylinder. Okay. And this guy's really big, but hopefully we can still use it. So, cylinder. As you know, just like the prism has two bases, so here is our uh, yes, fine. So here's our drawing of the oh, what do here. Here, here's our drawing of the uh, the cylinder, and as you see, there are two bases that are congruent and parallel. Altitude, remember, altitude is a segment, so this is an altitude of this uh, cylinder, and then the height. I probably should have written that in there. The height is the length of 
that altitude. So height is a length and altitude is a segment. And then in a right cylinder, this is at a right angle, this angle here down, down here between this, uh, what is it, like an edge going around. And then uh, uh, the height is a, a right angle. Okay, so what does this uh, cylinder look like when we unfold it? Let's see how well this comes off across in the video. Probably not too well, but um, here's your cylinder. Here's your cylinder. And what I'm gonna do is take a can opener and cut around uh, this thing and then fold it out. And notice that I have uh, two uh, bases there and then a rectangle. So like I said, you always start out with a rectangle when you are talking about the surface area. For all the solids that we will be talking about, except for a sphere, you will use a rectangular um, uh, shape to represent the lateral area uh, of that solid. And notice that in this lateral area, okay, this is the height, right? That's like the prism. But this length of your lateral area, uh, remember before we said was the uh, perimeter, the perimeter around the base. Well, same thing for a cylinder. It's the perimeter around the base. But what is that called? What's the perimeter around a circle called? Because in a um, cylinder, your big base is a circle. And the distance around a circle is called the circumference. So your surface area equation is the same. So surface area equals lateral area plus two times big base. That's why we have this here on your formula sheet that for both prism and cylinder, your surface area is lateral area plus two times big base. But then for the lateral area, the guess it's a rectangle, we got that. Um, but the lateral area, this length here on the lateral area is the distance around a circle, which is the circumference. And circumference, which you know, is 2 pi r. Or you could say pi d, if they gave you the diameter. But in this case, they're saying 2 pi r. And then this height, or I guess you'd say, <laughs> yeah, yeah, height, I guess, uh, on a rectangle, uh, we'll leave that as height. So that is the height of your three-dimensional uh, solid there. So that is your lateral area. That's what you will plug in here for lateral area. And then we want to multiply it to, we want to add to that two times the area of the big base. And what is the shape of our big base? It is a circle. And what is the equation for the area of a circle? It is pi r squared. So you'd say two times pi r squared. Okay, so let's do an actual example of that. Uh, here in your notes, I will help you to get started on this. This guy is a cylinder, and we're told that 13 inches, I don't like the way they did this, um, but I assume that it's referring to the entire uh, diameter uh, here. But it's a little bit, a little fiffle the way they do it. Uh, they could have put the 13 inches down inside here. That would have been clear that it refers to the whole thing. But for our purposes, let's call 13 inches the, the diameter. I think that's what it is. And this 15 inches is the height of your uh, cylindrical solid. So remember, we always start out with surface area equals lateral area plus two times base. In fact, probably we should have started out with a diagram.